Hey everyone, I'm Andrew and welcome back to the letterpress department here at Jukebox. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we create a luxurious foil stamp business card on a black suede paper stock. This card is going to feature three different foil colors, printing on the front side, back side, and a die cut, as well as a gilded foil edge. So there's a lot going on on this card and you're not going to want to miss a single moment. So stick around and enjoy the show. For today's project, we'll be using our 1960 Heidelberg GT Platin letterpress. The GT stands for Gross Tegel, which translates to Big Platin. This is the larger model of letterpress that was made by Heidelberg at the time. It has an impression area of roughly 13 inches by 18 inches and an impression strength of up to 60 tons. And it is equipped with a heated base and a foil puller for running hot foil stamping. We'll be using this press to make a business card using three foil colors on the front, one foil color on the back, then finishing it all off with a die cut and a metallic foil edge. Let's start off by turning on the heat for our base. 250 degrees is a good starting temperature as most foils work best around this temp. Here's a look at the four magnesium dies we'll be using today. One for the back and three for the front. These are the three foil colors we'll be using, gloss black, metallic copper, and metallic silver. So let's get started. The first step is to remove our chase from the press, which is fastened down tightly to the heating element. The heating element stays locked into the press, and the front of it can be removed with ease. Using a handle that screws in, I'll remove the chase so I can set up the first hot stamping die. The magnesium hot stamping dies are secured in place using a set of bunter posts. These posts screw into the chase and are tightened against the die, pinching it in place. I'll use four bunting posts so I have the ability to make adjustments or tweaks to all four corners. It's important to adjust the die until it's perfectly straight. I'll lock the base back into the press so it can heat up. It's important to make sure that the die, chase, and heating element are all making contact so the die is able to reach the correct temperature and everything is sitting as flat as possible. Next, I'll lay down a simple spot sheet that I will use later to make any adjustments to the overall impression. Then, I'll place a durable piece of epoxy glass board or phenolic board that I'll use to stamp against. The first color I'll be running is a gloss black foil, and the roll of foil is fixed to a bar below the impression area of the press. It's tensioned with a spring and will be pulled by a take-up spool at the back of the press. Next, I'll make a print onto the spot sheet to help me determine where the die will be landing. So I'll increase the pressure on the press to make sure the die and foil make contact with the spot sheet. You can see here how only the top half of the die is even, but before making any adjustments, I'm gonna take a few steps to prepare the press and sheets of paper I'll be printing with. I'd like to make sure my lower paper gauges and side guide are in a centered spot. Thank you. 
Next, I'll run a single sheet of thin paper that is larger in size than needed. On this sheet, you can see how the impression has some weak areas that I'll adjust later. For now, I'll use this to make sure the print is perfectly straight and take a few measurements to determine the actual sheet size that I'll need. For a two-sided print, I need the exact same margin of paper on both the left side and the right side of the sheet. I also like to run the top two crop marks off the edge of the sheet so I can see if any print shifting happens during the run. I'll mark where these two new edges should be and then trim off the excess at the paper cutter. The final size I get here will be the size of the sheet that I run. You can now see that the print is perfectly centered on the size of the paper, which will help to match registration on both the front and back. Now that I know what size of paper I'll need, it's time to cut down our paper stock. This business card will be printed on a 24 point black stock with a suede finish. It's a silky and thick soft touch paper that is very unique. For two-sided printing, it's always best to back trim the paper stock so the paper is as consistent as possible. Any variation in the paper size could cause the registration to move off the mark during the run. With the paper trimmed down, I'll set up the feeding table. Place my sheets into the press and adjust the delivery table as needed. I'll also bring the impression strength down a bit to compensate for such a thick paper stock. I'll place the sheet steadier and run the first sheet through the press and see how it looks. All the soft areas in the print will need to be adjusted with some packing on our spot sheet. So I'll use this first sheet to make a stencil of the area that appears weak. I'll use this stencil on the spot sheet to mark the areas that need building up. Now 
Next, I'll tear a thin tissue paper with a feathered edge to build up this exact area. Packing or make ready like this should only be placed where it's needed. I'll also increase the impression just a little more and adjust the length of the foil pulp. I don't want it to pull too much or too little foil on each impression. I'll run a few sheets through and see how they look. A perfectly flat, perfectly straight, and perfectly even impression overall. Finish up the rest of the run for the back of these cards and get ready for the next step. With the back of the cards finished, I'll remove the hot chase and change the die to the first of the three for the front side. Because my artwork is perfectly centered on the sheet, I'll be able to take some measurements and place this new die in the exact same position as the last die, so the front and back should be close to a perfect match without much adjustment. The chase is then locked back into the press to heat up to the proper temp. I'm using the same gloss black foil again for this pass, so I'll set that up too. I also like to lower the impression down whenever I'm starting a new die, just to be safe. I'll flip over my sheets to the other side and run one through to see how it looks. The impression will need some make ready, but I'll start by poking through all four crop marks to make sure the back matches with the front. It's very close, but not perfect. I'll also measure for straightness and then make the appropriate changes to the lower paper gauges and side guide until they match.
I'll run one more sheet through and check again. Now that the front side artwork and the back side artwork are perfectly registered to each other, I can begin packing the areas that are uneven. Once again, I'll make a simple stencil that shows me the general area that needs to be built up on the spot sheet, and then apply the necessary packing to even out the impression in the print. I'll also increase the impression just a bit more. All right, that is much better. Now the first color on the front is ready to go. All the sheets have run through the press without any shifting, so we're ready to lock up the next die in the chase and switch to the second foil color. What I'm showing here is a simplified version of how all this works. Foil printing can be a complicated process, and the temperature, speed of the press, foil tension, foil type, dwell time, and surface coverage can all influence how well the final print turns out. The paper type and coating can also be a huge factor in the quality of a foil stamp print. There's a lot of science behind the scenes here. So I'll once again lock in the next die while trying to have it positioned as precisely as possible so that it matches the previous print. Changing the foil color is as simple as switching one roll out for another. The metallic copper foil is our next color, so I'll set that up and take the first impression to see how it looks.
I can immediately tell that I haven't let the dye heat up to the proper temperature, as there are some areas that haven't adhered properly. The registration will also need some fine tuning too. I'll make this tiny adjustment by tweaking one of the bunting posts. With a closer look at the registration, I can tell it's now perfectly in place and we're ready to go. I'll keep an eye on the registration as the sheets run through the press, but any imperfection would be very obvious. With the second color finished up, I can now switch to the last hot stamping die and print the final color for this business card. I'll repeat the steps for the die setup in the same way as the previous two dies. A die with a small amount of foil coverage like this needs less make ready than solid areas or patterns of foil with a lot of coverage. I'll also switch out the copper roll of foil and replace it with a silver roll. I'll run the first sheet through and see how well this die matches. The registration is slightly off the mark, so I will make a couple adjustments to the guides until it's perfect. A slight adjustment to the side guide and a few shims of tape on the gauges should be enough to do it. You can see now our crop marks are pitch perfect. Now that it's good to go, we can let these run.
The next step on this business card is to die cut them to final size. For that, we'll use a type high steel rule die that is custom shaped to a two inch square with a half inch radius rounded corner. This steel rule die is locked into a chase using wooden furniture and a coin. It's not much different than a cookie cutter and the red ejection rubber helps the die cut shape to stop from getting stuck in the die. I'll set the impression strength to where I need it and run the first sheet through. The die is cutting through the sheet, but it is very much out of register. I'll measure the amount that the steel rule die needs to move, which is about 1 pica or 12 points. Points and picas are the standardized units of measurements for the print industry, but I can talk more about that at another time. So I'll move the die and make the necessary adjustments to center the die cut on the artwork. I'll run another one through, make sure it's perfect, and then start running. This is also a good demonstration of why bleed is important. You can see how the artwork extends past the die cut line, which is always ideal. We check for any movement or misregistration in the sheets by looking at the shells that are removed. If they are all consistent, then the die cutting is consistent too. We're not quite finished with these cards yet. For the final step, we're going to add a copper foil to the edges using our foil gilding press. This machine will apply the same copper foil to the edges of the cards for the perfect finish. And there you have it, a 24 point black suede business card featuring four passes of foil in three colors, a custom die cut and a copper foil gilded edge. So that wraps up the making of this beautiful foil stamp business card on a black suede paper stock that is 24 points thick. It features three colors of foil, a custom die cut, and a copper gilded edge. So if you have any questions about what you've seen in this video today, or you have any questions about printing or our capabilities in general, please leave a comment in the section below as I always try to make sure that we answer your questions as best we can. And of course, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because we're always trying to put out new videos and we don't want you to miss out. So once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.